All right, I've had so many people ask me how do you get into voiceover, I figured I'd just go ahead and make a video all about it. Now, there are definitely other videos out there that cover this topic, but in this video, I'm going to try and cover some truths and lies that I haven't really seen other videos cover, or they just covered a few of them. So, let's get into it. All right, so I'll probably make another video all about this in the future to go into more detail, but first, before we can even think about getting into voiceover, we need to define what voiceover is. Well, it can definitely get more technical than this, but you know when you're sitting there watching TV and up comes a commercial where you see a person doing things, but we hear a voice that's not coming from that person? Something like this. Pineapples. Bananas. People having coffee. What do these things have in common? Absolutely nothing. But I was able to use this stock footage to show you what a voiceover is. If you don't know how to get into voiceover, talk to your doctor immediately. Signs of not knowing what voiceover is can lead to bouts of depression. Depression can lead to not pursuing a career in voiceover. Not pursuing a career in voiceover can result in a chronic illness known as FOMO. If you have FOMO, continue watching this video as it's the only known cure. And remember, you know what they say. Now that was an example of a traditional commercial voiceover, though there are so many other genres out there that I'll cover probably in a future video. That's just a basic example. To add to this, things like podcasting aren't voiceover. I know, I know that may seem confusing if you're just getting into voiceover, but podcasting doesn't classify as voiceover. The more you get into the industry and community, the more that will make sense. All right, so now that we have a better idea of what voiceover actually is, when it comes to getting into voiceover, first things first, voice acting is acting. A lot of people first start getting into voiceover because they've been told they have a good voice or because they can do a bunch of wacky voices. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you have a good voice or can do 20 crazy voices. Any casting director or agent will tell you acting is key. If you can act, you've just significantly raised your chances of making it as a voice actor. I've been an on-camera actor for many years as well as a voice actor for many years, and let me tell you, there's not a big difference. Actually, when it comes to the acting side of things, there's no difference in how you should approach it. However, there are some differences, but they're just more technical. But let's break down the acting a bit more with an example. A lot of people think they can act and then step in front of the microphone for the first time ever, and this is what comes out. Well, what am I supposed to do? He's stronger than me, faster than me. He knows what I'm going to do before I even think of doing it. Look, there's just no way I can beat him, all right? You hear how flat that sounded? Just reading the lines with no emotions? This is typically what happens the first time people step in front of the microphone. And it's totally understandable. Acting isn't easy, no matter what your family members who have absolutely no experience other than watching TV all day try and tell you. The worst part, though, is there's a lot of people who hear it in their own heads as they deliver the lines, totally different than how it's actually coming out. A lot of people's initial reaction to hearing about voiceover is, Oh, voice acting? It's just reading. I could do that. And it is so much more, so much more than just reading. So here's an example of putting some acting on it. Well, what am I supposed to do? He's stronger than me, faster than me. He knows what I'm going to do before I even think of doing it. Look, there's just, there's no way I can beat him, all right? All of a sudden, those lines come to life. Now, this is all subjective, and there's a million ways I could have delivered those lines, but you get the idea. But then there are those people that can do wacky voices, so they think that's, all they need, and then they would simply deliver the lines with a voice like this. Well, what am I supposed to do? He's stronger than me, faster than me. He knows what I'm going to do before I even think of doing it. Look, there's just no way I can beat him, all right? Again, no acting, just putting on a wacky voice. And now, again, an example with acting. Well, what am I supposed to do? He's stronger than me, faster than me. He knows what I'm going to do before I even think of doing it. Look, there, there's just no way I'm going to beat him, all right? It all comes back to acting. Now, am I a great actor? Absolutely not. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what agents and casting directors are looking for here. They all agree across the board they would rather you be able to do one voice really well with real emotion than 20 voices with no emotion. 
Now let's tackle the I've been told I have a great voice statement. Back when I worked at a voiceover studio, I would hear this one all the time. And let me first say, if you've been told this, awesome, it's great. Of course, it's better to have a voice that people love listening to, but just like before, it will only get you so far. Believe it or not, it can actually be a bit of a curse at first. Stick with me. Having a great voice will get people's attention. It will cause people to take notice. The problem here is when people do take notice, will you be able to follow through with some great acting to back up that awesome voice? See, agents and casting directors hear this one all the time, and because they do, sometimes they can have a really short fuse for it. As in, they could potentially write you off quicker than usual because this happens to them so often. Someone will tell them, I've been told I have a great voice, and then they deliver lines like I did before, no acting, no emotion, just reading. Not always, but in a lot of cases, those agents or casting directors have immediately written you off before you even finish delivering your lines. You can avoid this by learning how to act, getting training just like you don't sit down at a piano in just a few weeks and become a Mozart, you don't become a great actor just by reading lines. It takes time, dedication, and practice. All right, now if you're still here and the whole acting side of voiceover didn't scare you away, let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so I talked about how important training is, so where do you get said training? Well, you could actually start where I did, a wonderful podcast called Voice Acting Mastery with Crispin Freeman. Crispin has been a successful voice actor for over 35 years. You should go check out his IMDb credits. That There's a lot. His podcast is jam-packed with so much amazing information about the voiceover industry and all that goes into having a voice acting career. Crispin also teaches voiceover in person and virtually. You can sign up for one of his classes over on his website, www.voiceactingmastery.com slash classes. I'll leave a link below this video in case you're interested. Another amazing resource to check out is IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. This is a website full of invaluable information that Dee Bradley Baker put together forever ago for voice actors that are wanting to get into voiceover. Dee Bradley Baker is a veteran in the voiceover community, having worked in the industry for over 35 years, just like Crispin. And you should also go check out his IMDb. It's, it, it's a lot. A couple of other great classes and resources to look into would be another veteran in the voiceover community, Steve Bloom, who has classes over at www.bloomvoxstudios.com. And then, if you would like to work on accents or something like that, you have Elijah Jane Schneider, who is best known for her work in South Park. Links to everything can be found below. You can also head over to my site and look under resources to find all of my recommendations. All right, so once you've got some solid training under your belt, you're going to need to do a demo to show off your talent and range. A demo will be crucial for you getting with an agent, joining a pay-to-play site. We'll get to that in a bit. If you're interested, I'll go further into demos in another video, so just let me know in the comments below if you'd like another video going further into demos. But in short, a demo can be work that you've done in the past, all put together totaling anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and 15 seconds, or it can be a spec demo, which is what most people do. A spec demo is a demo with five or more spots that have been specifically written for you to show off your strengths. So rather than you just putting together work that you've booked throughout your pursuit of voiceover, you just seek out a studio that creates and writes a demo specifically for you. The spots that are written for you should sound like spots that you would hear currently on the radio or TV or streaming. It needs to sound real and current. Now, I can't stress this next part enough. Don't your own demo. Obviously, there's a ton that goes into the audio when producing a demo. Recording, editing, mixing, and mastering. All of that takes years and years to master and get great at. Even choosing the right music and sound effects and knowing where to place them is crucial and takes a lot of talent. But let's put all of that to the side and just focus on the other side that a lot of people don't seem to talk about. Being directed. Once you make it as a voice actor, you will be directed in most of the sessions that you book. Now, there's so many reasons for this that I won't go into here, but to keep it short and simple, you don't hear yourself the way others do. Having a trained professional there to direct you who creates demos for a living is crucial. If you want to make this a career, you always want to set yourself in the best possible light that you can. When you're just getting started, you don't know the industry like these seasoned professionals do. You don't understand the subtle nuances and exactly what they're currently looking for at the time like those professionals do. And trust me, agents and casting directors can smell a homemade demo from a billion miles away. Most of the time, you only get one shot. You don't want your one shot to be wasted presenting a homemade demo. Now, I could say so much more here, but I'll leave it at that. 
All right, so most people don't immediately get signed with an agent right out the gate. So what can you do in the meantime to get some practice and possibly make some extra money? Join a pay-to-play site. Now, I have a warning that I'll get to here in a second about pay-to-play sites, but let me just first explain what a pay-to-play site actually is. Traditionally, in voiceover, you sign with an agent and that agent submits you for work that you will then audition for to see if they book you for that job. A pay-to-play site takes place of your agent. On a pay-to-play site, you'll be sent auditions through the site rather than through your agent. Most of the time, there's a yearly fee to join these sites as well. Now, listen closely. I've personally heard voiceover coaches, voiceover training studios, and other talent completely mislead other voice actors by telling them to just go sign up on some pay-to-plays to start making some money while you try to get with an agent. I've literally heard coaches and studios tell talent, oh, just Throw together a demo and go get in your closet with some clothes and that'll be good enough for a pay-to-play site. Or they would hear a not-so-great demo with some really rough audio due to the home studio not being properly treated and set up and they would tell that student, Oh, that'll be good enough for a pay-to-play site. Look, here's the thing. Pay-to-play sites have always been competitive, but now after the pandemic, they are insanely competitive. And if you ever hear a coach or studio ever say anything like what I just said, they're either flat-out lying to you or they have absolutely no idea how pay-to-play sites actually work. Am I right, Justin, or am I right? Let me think about that. Yes. All right. Whether you get signed with an agent or you join a pay-to-play site as a voice actor, you're going to need to audition to get jobs. So what is an audition? Well, either your agent or the pay-to-play site that you signed up for will send you an audition. Usually, it'll just be a section of the full script that they're sending out to talent to see who fits the spot the best. You'll go into your booth, hit record, and do your best to deliver the spot in the way that the client has specified in the email. They might want it to sound really natural and conversational or inspiring and uplifting, really matter of fact and professional, or really quirky and goofy. You get the idea. They specify all of this in the email they send out. You record the audition and then send it off to your agent or upload it to the pay-to-play site that you joined. Now, these days, most of the jobs that you audition for are expected to sound like that of what the actual spot will sound like once it's been completed and aired on TV or radio or wherever the spot will play. And don't worry, I don't mean that you have to add all of the sound effects and music. They actually never want you to do that. What I mean is they just want your audio to sound like that of a professional studio. You can't sound like you're in a box. You can't have a ton of background noise in the audio. You get the idea. It has to sound professional. All right, agents. Now, I hate to say it, but the more time goes on, the harder and harder it seems to get signed with an agent. Not trying to be a downer here, it's just I always want to shoot straight with you. A lot of agencies these days are only accepting talent by referral, as in you have to know somebody with that agency to put in the good word for you if you ever want a chance of signing with that agent. I know, I know, it sucks, but that's the way it's going right now. On the other hand, some agencies are still accepting online submissions where all you have to do is go to their website and just follow their submission process and hope that you hear back from them. The rule of thumb here is if you don't hear back from them in three to six months, just try again. But under no circumstances should you apply every week or every month. That's a surefire way to make sure that they never take you onto their roster. Lastly, if an agent ever asks you for money or any other type of fee up front, it is a 100% scam. Agents earn money when you book jobs. They take a commission from the jobs that you book. That's it. You should never pay them for anything other than the commission they get from you when you book a job. All right, home studios. Basically, what you need to know here, and I say it all the time, is the microphone isn't going to give you professional sounding audio. How you acoustically treat the space that you're recording in is what will give you great sounding audio. Now, the microphone can definitely make a difference, but it's a very small piece of the puzzle here. I did a video here on my channel titled Top 10 Home Studio Essentials for VoiceOver if you'd like more info related to this topic. But the most important thing to take away here is how important your home studio and audio quality is. If you want to make this a successful career and compete with all of the other top booking talent in this industry, you have to ensure your home studio sounds as professional as possible. If you want to see what acoustic treatment I recommend for your home studio, just head over to my site and look under recommended gear. If you also need help building out or treating your home studio, you can sign up for that service on my website as well under private coaching. Links in the description. All right, I wanted to talk about microphones in this video because I knew a lot of people would be looking for this here, but like I said previously, the microphone actually doesn't make a huge difference in your audio quality in the grand scheme of things. Yes, it can definitely make a difference, but nowhere near the difference that treating your home studio will actually make. 
Now, with that said, there's actually a lot that goes into microphones and choosing not only the right one for voiceover, but the right one for you and your specific situation. For more information on microphones and everything that has to do with choosing the correct one, you can go check out a two-part series I did here on my channel titled Best Microphone for Voiceover. I'll leave a link to these videos in the description. And I'll also be doing a video soon listing out all of the top microphones that I recommend for voiceover, so be on the lookout for that as well. But if you just really quickly want to see what microphones and other gear that I recommend, just head over to my website, audiodoctor.tech, where you can find all of that listed under recommended gear. All right, and now on to DAWs. Well, what the heck is a DAW? DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation, and it's simply an editor for you to record your audio into and then edit said audio. You have Adobe Audition, Audacity, Twisted Wave, Pro Tools, GarageBand, and about a billion others. All you need to know here is in the beginning, just pick a DAW that was actually made for what we do or that's more voiceover user friendly. I would never suggest anyone starting out use something like Pro Tools, Reaper, Logic, Cubase, because those DAWs were made for things like music production, sound design, and just really big sessions with sometimes hundreds of tracks. It's overkill for voiceover and will just over overwhelm you. Pick something like Adobe Audition, Audacity, or Twisted Wave. Those DAWs were either made for voice actors specifically or really voice actor friendly. They are much easier to learn than the other previous mentioned DAWs. I actually offer classes and private coaching for things like this, so make sure to check out the description of this video or just go check out my website to see what I offer over there. All right, that was just the basics of getting into voiceover. If you'd like me to go further into any of these topics, just let me know in the comments below. And remember, you know what they say.